Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about data types and we will start with numbers. A data type is pretty much just the type of data. We have numbers, which we'll start off with. Numbers are positive and negative. They can have a decimal and they might not have a decimal. These are the general categories that numbers are split up into Java. We have numbers with decimals and numbers without decimals. So a number without a decimal, Java calls these integers. So an integer in Java is a data type. Now there are different types of integers as well, and we'll get into those. First, we need to define an integer. And the way we define an integer is by the data type first, int, and then we need to give a variable to store the value in. So what variable? We can just choose num as the name of the variable. And then we have equals. And then we can set num to some number. We can say 5. So we have int, which is the data type. We have num, which is the variable. And then we have 5, which is the value. This is how we define variables in Java. Another way we can define a variable is first we can say int num. And then on the next line, we can say num equals five. So these are this is another way we can define variables in Java. Now that we have a variable to find, how do we print it? Well, we can do system.out.printf. And this is where the f part comes in the format. So the printf but f is for format, and the formatting for printing an integer is percent %d. And then after that, after the second double quote, we put in the variable name that we want to print out. Well, the variable is num, and then we can put our semicolon at the end. The percent %d is a placeholder for what we want to print out, which is num. So if we save this and we run it, we will see five down here. And we can also put in a backslash n to make it look nice. So then we can see the five on its own line and we'll see five. And we can do this as many times as we want. We can even put in another num and we can put in another percent %d here. We can reuse the variable however many times we want. Since we've already have said that there is int num, this is called a declaration. We declare this variable and then we call this an assignment. We have assigned num to be equal to five. So then we can, and since we have a declaration and uh, an assignment, we can just use the num variable as many times as we want. But we have to make sure that we have the same number of percent %d for however many nums we have. So then if we run this, we should see 5.5. Five. Yeah, 5.5. Five. And uh, if we put a space in between this, then we will see 5 space 5 print out at the bottom. And if we run it, we will see 5 space 5. So let me uh, put this back on one line. Int num equals 5. And then we can show it running again. 5 space 5, same thing. So those are the two ways we can define a num variable. And there is another type of variable called a long. Now, why are there different types? of integers. Well, the reason for that is because they can only store a certain size. Like an integer can only store between negative 2 billion and positive 2 billion. If you want a number bigger than 2 billion, then we would have to use a long. And we can say, we can say long num equals 5 billion thousand million billion and then we need to put an l at the end to specify that it's long 
Let me remove one of these percent D's and let me remove one of the nums. So in this case, we kept the variable type long, which is a special type of integer that can store longer numbers. And the variable name is num, and the value is 5 billion. And for long variables, we have to put this L at the end to specify that it is a long. And the since it's still a type of integer, we can still use percent %d. So then if we run this, we should see 5 billion. Yeah, we see 5 billion down here. And we can also make this a negative number as well, negative 5 billion, just by putting a minus sign in front of it. And if we run that, then we will see this minus sign in front right here. This minus sign right here. If we want something smaller than 2 billion, we have a different type of integer called a short. A short will store numbers up to around 30,000, positive and negative. If we want a number like 28,000, then we can use a short and uh, the num will remain the same. And since it's a type of integer, we can still use percent %d. So 28,000, that's a short. And we can even do negative 28,000. And then we see negative 28,000 at the bottom. And then our last type of integer variable is called a byte. And bytes can store anywhere from negative 100 to a positive 100. So let's say we want 60. And if we save that and run it, then we should see 60 at the bottom. So these are different types of integers, all with varying sizes. The size limit has to do with the space that is allowed inside the memory. But usually most people just use int for almost every application. The exception is when you need a number that's bigger or smaller than 2 billion, then usually we'll use long. But other than that, the most common integer use is int. So let's see what happens if we make a byte, a byte number that's bigger than, like what if we make a byte number that's 30,000? Well, then we, we get this error right here. It says incompatible types possible lossy conversion from int to byte. So it's pretty much saying that like this number is too big for it to be an, for it to be a byte. So instead of using a byte, we can use an int. And now the error disappears. And we can run it. And we get 30,000. So those are integers and the various types. From the smallest to the biggest, we have byte, short, int, long long is and for the long you have to put an l at the end for all the other types you don't have to do anything special you can just put in your your number and if you want a negative then you can put in the negative sign those are all the integer types now let's talk about the decimal types for decimal type we'll keep the variable as num but we'll uh, change the int to a float and if we end with a decimal, let's say we want 3.4. So we have a float num equals 3.4. And similar to long, where we had to put the L at the end, for float, we have to put an F at the end, 3.4 F. F is for float, L is for long. So a float is a decimal, but we have to change our percent D to a percent F. So percent %f is the format character for a float type. So now we have float, which is our data type. We have num, which is our variable name. And then we have 3.4, which is the data. And then we have f, which shows that it is a float type. Then we have printf, percent %f, which tells us that the thing we want to format is a floating type. 
and then we have num. So a float is, it has the same range as an int. We can only go up to about 2 billion to negative 2 billion. So let's run this and see what we get. So we get 3.4 with a bunch of zeros at the end. What if we don't want these zeros? What if we just want 3.4 by itself? Then this is where the power of the format comes in. We can decide how many decimal places we want. So if we just want 3.4, that's just one decimal place after. So we can do percent 0.1f, which tells us that we only want one place of value after the decimal. So after the decimal, we only want one place value. If we save this and run it, we should see 3.4 as the output. Now, if we want a number that's bigger than 2 billion, we have another variable for that. Let's say we want 5 billion. And then we want 0.45. Instead of float, we have a number, or we have a data type called a double. Now for double, we don't need the F at the end. And since we have two decimal places at the end, let's put a percent 0.2 so that it prints out two decimal places after the decimal point. So then if we run this, we will see 5 billion 0.45. What happens if we change the 0.2 to 0.1? And if we change the 5 to a 7, Will it round up or will it just cut it off? Let's see what happens. Java will round it up 0.5. If you have percent 0.1, you only want to print one decimal point, Java will do the rounding for you. So this is how we print out decimal numbers. We have double for numbers that are bigger than 2 billion or smaller than negative 2 billion. And we have integers or sorry, we have floats for numbers that are between negative 2 billion and 2 billion. Most people just use a double because you don't have to deal with the F at the end. In float, you had to put an F at the end of your decimal. So people just use double to keep it simple and int to keep it simple for numbers without a decimal. And we can also split up our declaration and definition separately. We can say double num and then say num equals uh, 5 billion point 47. This is, this is also allowed in double, short, byte, long, float. It's, it's allowed for any variable you want. And then we can print it out. So those are all the different types of integer numbers and floating point numbers or decimal numbers. In the next video, we will talk about other data types like characters, strings, and boolean.